afternoon students welcome back to yet another lecture of advanced degree in manufacturing systems and we have been looking into how to formulate optimization problems and how to use excel to solve that problem and i have shown you in a powerpoint how the entire problem is being set up and now what we are going to do is we are going to use excel microsoft excel to do a live demonstration of the same so if you look into this and to the screen i have microsoft excel kept here which has a complete setup of the problem as we were uh, talking uh, the variables uh, both x e x i the coefficients and the final solution of the entire excel okay and i have a excel demonstration page in which only the basic setup is there the remaining solutions and other rhs setup is not there we will use this as a reference guide and we will set up this page accordingly by referring to this so that you can understand that and then you can use my presentation as a reference guide to study it all by yourself so first and foremost assume that you are basically setting up uh, this is the final solution this is the basic page so you have two variables xe and xi okay both the variables are there xe and xi so first we set up this matrix the variables matrix both the variables are declared xe and xi and the coefficients of the variables are 3 and 2 respectively which we have kept here the solutions as of now these are the values that excel will change okay so we will i am just writing here these values will be calculated calculated by excel okay uh, while satisfying the constraints okay the this is the objective function value the objective function value will be calculated by excel using the constraints and min max criteria so what we are saying here is that the value of the objective function which will be which we shown here in the previous page exactly right here which was declared as a sum product aspect will be shown here okay fine so this value will be calculated by microsoft excel uh, by itself and the constraints 1 2 4 are set up right here we just wrote the coefficients the xe coefficients and xi coefficients here the this constraint says what xe plus 2 xi is less than or equal to 6 this constraint says 2 xe plus xi is less than or equal to 8 these are both the availability of the raw material constraints so these two are the uh, raw material constraint one this is the uh, raw material material constraint sorry my bad that is constraint two okay so we have both the constraints raw material constraint there and uh, this constraint says x minus x e plus x i or x i minus x e is less than or equal to one this is the demand constraint constraint one and this is the demand constraint two okay so here we are saying that x i less than or equal to two so this is the coefficients of this these coefficients are set up in such a way that you can set up the lhs and rhs of this matrix much easily okay so that's the idea all right so the how do we do that we will see in a second but first and foremost uh, what we have to do here is we have to ensure that we ha we have to see whether the solver is put it in the microsoft excel solver is there so if you go to data and if you look at the analysis tool pack there is nothing called an analysis here so this tells you that the system does not have solver add in or the microsoft excel solver add in is not available with the system so what do we do for that is first we go to the file option okay then a lot of tabs in excel 
what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to click the options tab of this. So, you can as I told you earlier this is Microsoft Excel 2010. So, it will be different from the Excel 2007 video that I was showing you earlier. So, the minute you click options this is going to change. So, please watch ok. So, when you click this a new box a pop up box comes out ok in this regard. There is general tab then there is formulas tab ok. Then there is proofing tab and you go by each one of the tab it will change things by itself ok. And what you are trying to do is you are trying to get into the uh, add ins tab ok. So, once you come to the add in tab you have active application add ins, inactive application add ins and document related add ins. And remember what we told it was that we were looking into something called inactive applications add in in the previous one and you look for what you call as a solver add in which is available right here this is the solver add in ok. So, you click the solver add in right the minute you click the solver add in it actually uh, says it says the manage excel add ins or add ons ok and there is a button of go. So, this is says tool for optimization and equation solving and all other aspects that I shared, 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 shared earlier. So, if I say go ok it shows you these kind of 4 pages earlier in the previous one I showed you this pop up button will come up and I am not going to click the analysis to tool pack I am just going to do the solver add in nothing else ok. Uh, you can also click the analysis tool pack if you want to that is up to you, but I am just doing the solver add in for the time being click ok ok. So, the excel will do something it will do a preparing to install and uh, it will do uh, it will take a little bit of a time period to do this, but please wait patiently uh, depending upon your computer and your version Microsoft will take a little bit of time to do this aspect. But this is very important because many of the times most of the computers will not have this tool pack set up automatically ok. So, you will have to spend time little bit in setting this up. So, you pl please the reason I am showing we are showing the screen to you is it will take little bit of time to do this and you just have to wait patiently. In certain cases it might not even happen also ok and I we hope this will not uh, happen here today because it is Microsoft you cannot really uh, predict how it will behave today. But that is what it is it is supposed to uh, install by itself. Sometimes if the computer is relatively new like a Microsoft 8 and uh, you have uh, more memory uh, in your computer then this installation will be very quite quickly I mean like, but in all cases no matter what you are supposed to spend about 1 to 2 minutes in ensuring that this installation do happen ok. So, we are uh, we will just wait uh, for the installation to happen at this time period ok. So, now we are back to the square one uh, we this installation has completed by Microsoft Excel and if you go to data then you can see the new new thing has come up called uh, uh, analysis and you can see there is an solver that has come up ok. It will do the solve. So, I told you it will take little bit of time. So, it has taken time reasonably good amount of time and so now with this we now have to look into how the so setup is there for us. So, the first and foremost is these values are filled by Excel and this was created as a sum product of C4 and D4 and C C4 D4 is this and C5 and D5 ok. So, mm, sorry this is the sometimes some of the malware byte will actually keep on complaining that the solver add in that you have done is just a uh, wrong thing to do, but do not worry that happens sometimes. Uh, so, we as I was telling earlier is this is a sum product of C4 D4 and C5 D5. So, we will do that here is we basically type equal to some product some product of ok. We have to say array the first one is our coefficients these two arrays ok. So, we will say these two ok. We will say C4 to D4 ok comma C5 to D5 that is the sum product for the time being. It will show the value as 0 because these values there is no coefficients ok there is nothing available right here. So, we have set up the first set which is the product sum product of these which if you look into this also it is exactly the same same setup as this one 
right? Now our job is to set up all these LHS and RHS things. Okay. So the first one we are going to say is uh, constraint one. It says C8 to D8. Take the values of C8, D8. Multiply it with the values that you are going to put on C5 and D5. Whatever values you are changing that. Okay. So this is a sum product of these two columns. So we are going to do that right here. Okay. Which is equal to sum product of we are saying we require is these two cells so we will say c8 to d8 okay comma then we don't want the values to be changed in between so what we are going to say is dollar value of uh, c dollar this is 5 to dollar value of d dollar 5 okay so we are saying that this is the sum product for you so the first constraint as if you remember again it say basically says it is the sum product of these two coefficients x e and x i coefficients with whatever values we are putting there and this is the rhs side of it okay we have done that so far then so that is done then we go to the second one where we can see that this is set up this way okay you are multiplying these two c9 d9 values with that of whatever the values that you are changing there in c5 and d5 okay so with that we will actually go to here and we will say equal to some product of some product of uh, c9 to d9 you can see oh sorry my bad c9 to d9 comma so you can see that these values are highlighted in this array comma then we want to use the steady values that are being used so that is c5 to dollar d5 okay so the same as the previous case except that we are using the separate second set of constraints coefficients and we are multiplying it with whatever the value that excel is trying to find out by itself okay so that is set up that way now what we do is we go to the third constraint okay uh, third constraint if you look into this it is again set up as a uh, some product of the third constraint and the values that are shown there so we replicate the same thing right here so where we say it is a sum product of some product of uh, the tenth row okay that we are saying so c10 to d10 okay comma and then we want the uh, values of the c5 d5 whatever the values that we are putting there so we say dollar c dollar 5 to dollar d dollar 5 okay same as that of the previous constraint and it gives you the zero there okay then we do the last constraint which is if you go here which is shown as if you look into this it is the sum product of these values the the eleventh column with that of the uh, fifth row whatever the values that have been shown there so we go to here and we say equals sum product of we want the eleventh row so it is c11 to d11 comma and we wanted to multiply it with the fifth row so dollar c dollar 5 to dollar d dollar 5 okay we do that and we get all these values as zeros because there is no values are available here so we have set up the so this is the this is the setup of constraint matrix uh, for uh, optimization problem okay uh, so this is the way i usually set up the problem so that uh, you can probably understand that uh, the things are much easy for you to do okay? once this is done what you need to do is you can you, know, you want your answer to come right here in the z column so one of the things once you set all of these up you ensure that you click this column and go to what you call as the solver okay so you click the solver 
it actually shows the setup of the whole thing. If you click some other column also it is fine. So like for example is you can see that it has picked up this, this column separately. So let us say you did not do that. Let us say you ended up clicking here yeah, somewhere here you clicked here somewhere and you say solver. Okay. So then uh, if you are confusion you can always come and click this place and say okay please show the answer there. Okay. So that is another way to do this. So I usually do is I just click this solver page and click solver there. So that it automatically picks up the uh, sixth page where the sixth cell where, where is your supposed to be your objective function. So this is your objective function alright. Then as I said earlier you have to decide whether it is maximization, minimization or value of. So if you do a minimization it changes this way if you say a maximization it changes you can set a value of uh, that also is doable. So we are saying this is a maximization problem and what you are going to say here is you are going to say by changing the values of C5 and D5. Okay. So normally this is uh, Excel is very good at detecting things okay. and, uh, and it has also identified the minute you set up this kind of a constraint matrix it will immediately identify that this is the constraint matrix that you are looking for. Okay. But I am going to just demonstrate how these constraints can be added in. I will show you how this constraints to be added in also. So by so we know now that it has decided the, by changing the values of the cells, uh, but you can also do it this way. It will fill that value by itself, and then normally you won't have any constraints. I mean, ideally speaking, but when you set up a problem like this properly, then it Excel is good at identifying it. Uh, they have added intelligence into it, but you can basically do by adding a constraint right here. Okay, so the cell reference you can say basically the first place you click here is you can say all these guys okay this is the first constraint and then you can decide whether it is less than or equal to equal to greater than or whatever it is we are choosing the less than constraint and we do the rhs out of this which is basically this part right and we say okay so the first constraint get added up i hope you guys uh, understood this i'm just going to repeat this once again i click the add constraint it asks for the cell reference. So the cell reference is where we take the LHS ones where we have kept all the uh, um, some product constraints C16 to C19 all these values are put right there. And then we say the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to according to however you have set it up and we have used the less than or equal to. So we put it there and then we it says what constraint need to be satisfied that is the RHS. The RHS values are populated right here. There you go. Okay, D16 to D19. Okay, so you have the first constraint C16 to C19 less than or equal to D16 to D19. That part is taken care of. The next constraint that you can add is add another constraint where we say that these values C5 to D5 both of them should be greater than or equal to value is you can type in value 0 also. So which that is your non-negativity constraint. The minute you do that, that constraint actually shows up right here. C5 to D5, these two values, these two values are non-negative. You can also here make unconstrained variables non-negative. You can click that if you have any, any constraints that you have not done. Instead of putting this constraint, you can click this also. It will also take care of it. Okay. And as I said earlier that there is multiple ways of solving this. GRG non-linear is available. Then the simplex algorithm is available. And so I is the... Uh, evolutionary algorithm but for us we choose the simplex LP in this regard okay. And uh, uh, so the, the GRG non-linear is for solving problems that are smo smooth non-linear functions. Select the LP simplex engine for solving linear problems and the evolutionary engine for solving that are non-smooth. So for our case it is actually a simple linear problem so we are using the simplex one on this one and what we do here is that then we click the solve button. So once it is done, we click the solve button. And what happens now is that the Excel has found out the values. 3.333 is the value of the uh, XE and 1.333 is the value of uh, the XI and 12.6667 is the value of the objective function. And you can see that the same solution has been created by Excel, right? And uh, uh, we can also see a report also. If you can keep, keep the solver solution. 
and uh, you can do all these analysis as well okay and as you say click ok and uh, you can see all these reports are shown up right here so the answer report basically says how does the value was shown okay so if you look into this excel sheet the time taken to this is iteration the two iterations uh, the precision is uh, pretty high okay and you can see that the cell uh, z z value the 12.6667 is there and c5 xc and xi for the solution is 3.33 they are continuous values they are not integer values and the first constraints okay the lhs and rhs are binding constraints okay binding constraints means there is no slack absolutely no slack available that means they are fulfilled totally then the constraints uh, 4 and 5 are lhs are non binding which means they have slack means there is still some more way for you to go with that okay and you can see that the values of the non negativity constraints are also satisfied so you can see all the six constraints are satisfied as part of this okay and you can also look at the sensitivity report which actually says the sensitivity analysis is that xz and xi the final values are these okay the objective coefficient is 3 and 2 allowable increase is 1 and 4 and allowable decrease is 2 and 0.5 okay so that kind of a thing you can think about it before the constraints gets violated okay this is like other parts of the solution but this is the optimal solution this is where you actually get the maximum value but there is some changes that is possible in this you can increase this by one more and uh, decrease this by two more but the answer will not be optimal in this number then limits is another one is what are the limits of this right so the lower limit and upper limit is the 0.333 is the lower limit and upper limit is 3.667 that is the lower and upper limits and then the other one is 0 and 10. So, within this values there is a feasible region of the solution anyway that is something else for you to identify. So, these kind of reports are available but for us these two values are the most important thing for us because what we are trying to say here is that once we know these setup this is the one that gives us the maximum usage and in the case of energy related problems we are going to say that these setting up are going to give us the maximum output while minimizing the energy if the constraints were set up like this then these are the values in which you would like the production machine to operate most of the time okay so i hope you guys understood how the excel can be used as a very good tool for doing optimization this is a simple um, setup of a problem for an optimization and uh, this uh, excel spreadsheet will be shared with you guys as part of the lecture material uh, you can use the excel sheet and uh, try this and download it and uh, go forward with that and the previous two problems that were created we will set it up in such a way that uh, you can actually uh, use excel to solve that other two problems that were also formulated it will be demonstrated by Prabal or one of the TAs of the course in this one and in the next lecture onwards we will start looking into what we call as the optimization algorithm some of the optimization approaches available how do you solve different type of optimization problems and what are some of them that are more popular in the green manufacturing area when you are looking at optimizing multiple parameters like energy metal removal rate without compromising the throughput rate uh, minimizing the non biodegradable substances and those kind of stuff okay so with that uh, today we will conclude our lecture and uh, please practice there is no other way you can learn this without practicing this and once you practice once you're done with practicing this and you are gain expertise in this you will be able to solve reasonably good optimization problems in this fashion thank you very much